Hi everyone, today we're going to be solving Edexcel IGCSE Chemistry Unit 4CHO slash 4CH1 Paper 1C January 2017 In this particular video, we're going to be solving the entire question paper Substances can be elements, compounds or mixture Which one of these is a correct symbol for an element? Helium is the correct symbol for an element Whereas the hydrogen is a molecule Water is a compound H2O2 is a compound which of these substances is a compound? Air is a mixture of compounds and molecules. Hydrogen is a molecule. Oxygen is a molecule. Water is a compound and it is pure. Which of this method is used to obtain water from a mixture containing salt and water? Since salt dissolves in water, so to get the water from the salt, we'll have to do simple distillation. Paper chromatography is used to separate dyes present in some inks. A sample of ink P is spotted onto some chromatography paper. Four known inks A, B, C, D are also spotted on the same paper. The diagram shows how the experiment is set up and the paper at the end of the experiment. You can set the beginning of the experiment and at the end of the experiment. From the baseline, the spots, you know, they have traveled up. State why the solvent level should not be above the baseline at the start of the experiment. To prevent the inks from dissolving into the solvent. Explain which dye present in one of the inks A, B, C or D is also present in ink P. So we can see P contains the same level to that of B. So P contains B. P and B has a spot at the same height, which means that they have the same type. State why ink D does not move during the experiment. Ink D is insoluble in the solvent that has been used in this experiment. The dyes have an RF value that can be calculated using this expression. RF is equals to distance moved by the dye divided by the distance moved by solvent. Complete the table for the dye in ink A. Distance moved by dye in ink A in millimeter. So the distance moved in millimeter is 18 millimeter. Distance moved by the solvent is 49 millimeter. RF value of the dye in ink A. So to find out the RF value, we'll have to divide 18 by 49. The diagram shows an experiment to demonstrate diffusion. Cotton wool soaked in concentrated ammonia solution. On the other side, we have cotton wool soaked in concentrated hydrochloric acid solution. In between, we have ammonium chloride, which has formed. The word equation for the reaction that occurs in this experiment is ammonia plus hydrogen chloride producing ammonium. Right. Complete the chemical equation for this reaction. So ammonium chloride has a formula of NH4Cl. Draw a circle around each of the two state symbols that could be included in the chemical equation in part E1. Because ammonium chloride is a solid, so we can circle the S and ammonia and HCl other gases. The diagram shows the arrangement of the molecules in two of the three states of water. Each circle represents a molecule of water. Complete the diagram to show how the molecules of water are arranged in the solid state. In the solid state, we will have a regular arrangement. Which row of the table correctly describes the arrangement and movement of the molecules of water in solid state? In molecules of water, the arrangement is regular and it only vibrates because it's solid. Which word describes water changing from a liquid to a solid? The so changing from a liquid to a solid will be freezing. Give the word used to describe the change of state represented by the equation. H2O solid turning into H2O gas. We have a solid that directly turns into gas, meaning the process is sublimation. Water is the name used for H2O liquid. Give the two names used for H2O gas. We can use either water vapor or steam. The diagram shows the formula for six organic compounds. You can see the first one is methane. X is octal. V is bromomethane. This is ethene. Z could be ethanol. And Y is dichlorodipropane. Oh okay, guys, the names are not important. I have just given you for as a reference. So then we can talk about it later on. Which letter represents a compound shown as a displayed formula? We can see V is a displayed formula. Which two letters represent compounds that are members of the same homologous series? Methane, U, and X, they are alkenes. Which letter represents a compound that is formed from methane by a substitution reaction? So we can see that in methane, there were carbon with four hydrogen and one of them got substituted in V. The compounds U and W are burned in air. Compound U undergoes complete combustion and compound W undergoes incomplete combustion. Balance the chemical equation for this reaction. Since we have one carbon, we're going to produce one carbon dioxide. 
four hydrogen will produce two H two. Then we'll have to count the number of oxygen on the right hand side. There are two oxygens here, plus there are two oxygen on here. So total of four oxygen. So we'll put a two here to balance it. Two carbon C two H four produces two carbon monoxide, and four hydrogen can produce two H two. So there are total of four oxygen on the right hand side. So we can put a two here. State why carbon monoxide formed from compound W is poisonous. Carbon monoxide binds with hemoglobin and decreases the capacity of blood to transport oxygen. Burning compound X in a car engine can cause an environmental problem. These steps show how the environmental problem occurs. Step 1. Two gases react to form nitrogen oxides. Nitrogen oxides react with water in the atmosphere to form an acid. The acid damages some building materials. Name two gases that react to form nitrogen oxides. Inside the car engine, nitrogen and oxygen react at very high temperature. Give the formula of the acid formed in step 2. So the acid formed in step 2 will be nitric acid. So HNO3. Name a building material that is damaged by this acid. Limestone or marble. The term species is sometimes used to refer to neutral atoms and to positive and negative ions. The table shows the number of subatomic particles in 8 different species. Species A, number of protons, 5, number of neutrons, 5, number of electrons, 5. Explain which two letters represent neutral atoms of the same element. To find out the neutral atoms of the same element, we will have to have same number of protons and same number of electrons. So 5, 5, 5 and 5. So you can see A and B represents neutral atoms. Now the explanation will be, they have the same number of protons and they have the same number of electrons. Protons are positive, the electrons are negative, which makes them neutral overall. Explain which two letters represent negative ions formed from the same element. To be same element, they must have same number of protons. So these are the pairs. Now, to be negative ions, they must gain electrons. So we can see in G and H, they have both gained two electron H. The reasoning will be because they have the same number of protons, but there are more electrons than the number of protons in them. Explain which letter represents the atom with the lowest mass number. The lowest mass number we can see is of A because it contains 5 protons and 5, 5 neutrons which gives it a total mass of 10. So the answer will be A because it has the fewest total number of protons and neutrons. What is the electronic configuration of species E? E has 7 protons, so electronic configuration will be 2,5. The table shows the percentage composition of a sample of magnesium. Magnesium 24, 25 and 26. Calculate the relative atomic mass of magnesium to one decimal place. So, the relative atomic mass of magnesium will be 24 times 78.6 plus 25 times 10.1 plus 26 times 11.3. Then we will divide the whole thing by 100. This will give us a value of 24.327. Since we have to answer to one decimal place, so we will then round it up to 24.3. The diagram shows the position of some elements in four periods of the periodic table. What numbers are used to identify the periods shown in this diagram? The periods shown in these diagrams are 2, 3, 4 and 5. Explain which element in the diagram is the least reactive. Argon is the least reactive because it does not easily lose or gain electrons. It's a noble element. State the similarity in the electronic configuration of sodium and argon. Sodium and argon belongs to period 3. So they have the same number of shells or energy levels. State the similarity in the electronic configuration of sodium and rubidium. Sodium and rubidium belongs to the same group. So they both have one electron in their outer shell. State a physical property of sodium that shows it is a metal. Sodium is a good conductor of electricity in its solid state. The diagram shows the addition of these two elements to troughs containing water. Lithium added to trough A and potassium added to trough B. State two observations that could be made in both troughs when the elements are added to water. We would definitely observe effervescence and both of the metals would be moving around. Both of the metal floats and slowly they react and disappear and become smaller. 
state one observation that could be made only in trough B because potassium is a very reactive metal so it catches fire and burns. Complete the chemical equation for the reaction that occurs in trough A. Lithium plus water produces lithium hydroxide and hydrogen. To balance the equation, we'll put a 2 before lithium hydroxide. After the reaction in trough A is complete, a few drops of phenolphthalein were added. The phenolphthalein changes color, stain the final color of phenolphthalein. Because lithium hydroxide is alkaline, so the final color will be pink. Give the formula of iron form during the reaction in trough A that causes the phenolphthalein to change color. So, it is alkaline solution, so there will be hydroxide ion. Since they wanted the formula, we will have to write OH-. Silver can be obtained from silver oxide by heating. In an experiment, 32.4 gram of silver is obtained by completely decomposing 34.8 grams of silver oxide. Calculate the mass of oxygen formed in this decomposition. Mass of oxygen. So, we will subtract 32.4 from 34.8 and this will give us 2.4 grams of oxygen. Determine the empirical formula of silver oxide by calculating the, calculating the amount in moles of silver atoms and oxygen atoms obtained in this experiment. First of all, we need to find out the number of moles of silver. So we will divide the 32.4 with 108, which gives us 0.3 moles. Then we are going to find out the number of moles of oxygen. So we will divide the 2.4 with 16, which gives us 0.15. So the formula will be, we can see there are two silver with one oxygen because 0.3 mole ratio with 0.15 gives us two silver with one oxygen. So the formula will be Ag2O. Chlorine gas is bubbled through an aqueous solution of potassium bromide until a change of color is seen. Write a chemical equation for this reaction. So, aqueous solution of potassium bromide will be KBr. Reacting with chlorine will be Cl2 to produce KCl since, and Br2. Since the bromine and the chlorine both are diatomic, so we will have to balance by using 2. Explain the reaction that occurs. In your answer, we can refer to the final color, the substance that causes the final color, the type of reaction, relative reactivities of the two group 7 elements involved. Guys, in a question like this, where there is four marks and four points are being asked, if you just simply answer points, you will get your full marks. So first of all, the final color, the solution becomes orange. Why does it become orange? Because of the bromine. What type of reaction is it? Well, the reaction is a displacement reaction. So one, you know, one molecule displaces an ion, which is less reactive. And then the type of reaction, the substance that causes the final color, the substance that causes the final color is bromine. The relative reactivities of the two group 7 elements involved, chlorine is more reactive than bromine. So this will be your answer. Number 7. This question is about the formation and reactions of some oxides. The diagram shows the apparatus that can be used to make hydrogen, which then reduces copper to oxide to copper. The unreacted hydrogen is burnt. Dilute sulfuric acid reacting with the magnesium bits, and then the hydrogen that is produced is reacting with the copper oxides, oxygen, and it is producing water. The water is collected in, at the bottom of this particular vessel because it's very cold, and the, the remainder of the hydrogen is being burned. And the water that is produced is then tested chemically using anhydrous copper to sulfate, which will then become blue. Explain one safety precaution that should be taken after adding the dilute sulfuric acid and before lighting the unreacted hydrogen gas. We will have to wait until all the air has been flushed through the system because this will prevent possible explosion. Otherwise, because if the hydrogen and the air is present at the same time, air contains oxygen, which will then explode inside the reaction vessel. Two observations that could be made when dilute sulfuric acid reacts with magnesium. When dilute sulfuric acid reacts with magnesium, effervescence will be observed and we will see the magnesium will slowly disappear and become smaller. State one observation that could be made when the hydrogen is passed over the heated copper 2 oxide. The copper 2 oxide is black in color. When hydrogen reacts with it, it removes the oxygen and forms copper metal. So it goes from black to orange or pink brown. State the final color of the copper to sulfate. The anhydrous copper sulfate was white in color. Addition of water will turn it blue. Complete the word equation for the reactions that occur. Magnesium plus sulfuric acid will produce magnesium sulfate and hydrogen. Copper to oxide plus hydrogen will produce copper and water. Anhydrous copper to sulfate plus water will produce hydrated copper sulfate.
A sample of sulfur is burned in a gas jar of oxygen. A piece of damp litmus paper is placed in the gas jar. The litmus paper changes color. Explain what this color change shows about the acid base character of the oxide of sulfur formed. The litmus becomes red in color. So it shows that the oxide of sulfur is acid. The formula of two oxides are MgO and SO2. Suggest the formula of the salt formed when these two oxides are neutralize each other. So when MgO reacts with SO2, it produces MgSO3. Dilute sulfuric acid can be used to make soluble and insoluble salt. A student plans an experiment to obtain a pure dry sample of soluble salt, sodium sulfate from dilute sulfuric acid. The student does a titration to find the volume of sulfuric acid needed for the complete reaction with the other reactor. Describe the steps she should take in her titration. We, we have to refer to the pieces such as pipette, butate, and conical flask in the experiment. So in order to produce sodium sulfate, the student needs to react sodium hydroxide with sulfuric acid, dilute sulfuric acid. So at first, the student pipettes 25 cm cube of sodium hydroxide solution into a conical flask. The student then places the sulfuric acid in a burette, then adds an indicator to the conical flask. The student adds the acid from burette to the conical flask until the indicator changes color. Once the indicator changes color, then the titration is complete. The end point is found. The diagram shows the burette reading in one titration. Use this reading to complete the table, giving all values to the nearest 0 0.05 cm Burette reading in cm cube after adding solution. After adding solution, it is 23 point, and before adding solution, it is 3.6. So 23.20, 3.355. .3 So the volume of solution added is 19.65. The student plans a different experiment to obtain a pure dry sample of the insoluble salt barium sulfate from dilute sulfuric acid. Describe the steps she should take in her experiment. The student should use a soluble barium compound such as barium chloride or barium nitrate. And then the student needs to react the barium chloride or the barium nitrate with dilute sulfuric acid. This will produce a precipitate of barium sulfate. Then the barium sulfate can be filtered off the residue is then washed to remove any impurities. It is washed with distilled water. After that, the residue, which is barium sulfate, is left on the filter paper and left it is placed in an oven to dry. A student prepares a sample of copper to sulfur crystals using this reaction. Copper oxide reacted with sulfuric acid to produce copper sulfate aqueous and water. He obtains the crystals from the solution form. He records the information about the reactants used. Mass of copper oxide 6.3 gram. Volume of sulfuric acid 52 C. Concentrated of sulfur. Sulfuric acid 1.1 mol per year. Calculate the amount in moles of copper to oxide used. So to find this one, we will have to do the MR of copper oxide, which is 60. 3.5 plus 16 for oxygen, which is 79 point. Then we will find out the number of mole of copper oxide by dividing 6.3 with 79 point, which gives us 0 0.079 mole. Calculate the amount in moles of sulfuric acid used. To find out the number of moles of sulfuric acid used, we will multiply the volume with concentration. The volume is given in cm cube, so we will first convert the volume 52 divided by 1000, which will give us the volume in dm cube, and then we will multiply it by 1.1. So the number of moles of H2SO4 becomes 0.057. Why is it important for the amount of copper to oxide to be greater than the amount of sulfuric acid? We want to ensure the complete neutralization of the sulfuric acid. Draw a diagram of the apparatus that the should, student should use to remove the excess copper to oxide from the reaction mixture. So a filter funnel along with the filter paper should be drawn. Labeling is not required. Guys, if the question has two marks, please do the labeling. In a similar preparation, the student uses 0.12 mole of copper to oxide to obtain crystals of copper to sulfate CuSO4.5H2O. Calculate the maximum mass of CuSO4.5H2O he could obtain using this 
preparation. So to do this, we'll have to find out the MR of CO is so 4.5H2O, which is 63.5 plus 32 plus 16 times 4 plus 5 into water, which has a value of 18, equals to 249.5. Then we will find out the mass of CO is so 4.5H2O because from the equation, we can see that one mole of upper oxide produces one mole of CuSO4, which will then in turn produce one mole of hydrated CuSO4.5H2O. So the number of moles will be equal to the number of moles of copper oxide that is mentioned in the question. So mass of CuSO4.5H2O equals to 249.5 times 0.12, which gives us 30 grams. So the maximum mass is 30 grams. A student does an experiment to investigate how the temperature changes as different masses of solid potassium nitrate are dissolved in water. She looks at this graph to help her decide the mass of water and potassium nitrate to use in her experiment. Solubility of potassium nitrate in grams per 100 grams of water. The student decides to use the mass of 50 grams of water at temperature of 25. From the graph, find the maximum mass of potassium nitrate that dissolves in this Experiment. So first of all, we'll have to find out the answer for 25 degrees Celsius. We'll extrapolate at 25 and find out the mass of solubility of potassium nitrate at that temperature, which in this case we can see around 34 or 35 grams. So guys, this is around 40 grams. So since this is the solubility, 40 gram is the solubility in 100 grams of water. So in 50 grams of water, it will be divided by 2. So 40 divided by 2 equals to 20 grams will be dissolving in this experiment. The student prepares 6 samples of potassium nitrate, each with a mass of 2 gram. She pours 50 cm cube of water into a 100 cm cube beaker and records the temperature of the water. She then uses this method to find the change in temperature as she adds sample of potassium nitrate. Add the first sample of potassium nitrate to the beaker and style until the sample dissolves. Record the temperature of the solution. Add the second sample of potassium nitrate to the solution in the beaker and then stir until the sample dissolves. So every time the student is adding 2 grams of the potassium nitrate up until the student keeps you know, added uh, like 12 grams in total. Then the student records the new temperature of the solution and repeats all six samples until 12 gram is added. And the temperature, which was in the beginning 25.2, reaches to a lowest of 8.8. Plot the student's result on the grid. Draw a straight line of the street. From the graph, find the mass of potassium nitrate that would be needed to produce a temperature change of 10 degrees Celsius. So the starting temperature is 25.2. We want to go to a you know temperature decrease, which is then it will be 15.2. That will extend the line. This is seven. So thereby 7.3 grams. Guys, do not worry. Your answer, the examiner will collect from your graph. So be pretty much confident that you will get it correct. Explain how the student's results show the type of heat change that occurs when potassium nitrate dissolves in water. So when potassium nitrate dissolves in water, the temperature decreases. This means the change is endothermic. Complete the energy level diagram for this experiment. So we have potassium nitrate which is reacting with water. Since this is an endothermic reaction, potassium nitrate solution will be at a higher level and then we'll show it just like an energy profile diagram. The student repeats the experiment and obtains this result. Mass of water, 50 grams. Total mass of potassium nitrate added, 15 grams. Starting temperature, 32 degrees Celsius. Final temperature, 13 degrees Celsius. Calculate the heat energy change in joules using the expression. The expression uses Q is equals to MC del T. C is given already, which is 4.2. This can be pretty confusing for many students. We have to negate the mass of the potassium nitrate that is added. We only consider the mass of water. So 50 grams of water times 4.2. The temperature change is 32 minus 13. So the heat energy change will be 3990 joules. Synthetic polymers are often manufactured from crude oil. The main stages in the manufacture of one of these polymers are shown in this sequence. Crude oil to fuel oil produced, fuel oil to propene produced, propene to polypropene produced. The diagram represents the fractionating column used in an oil refinery. We can see the fuel oil is collected pretty low. Describe how fractional distillation produces fuel oil from crude oil. So, crude oil is heated to a very high temperature, for example, like 500 degrees Celsius, and then it is converted into vapor. The 
the vapor then is passed into the fractionating column. The vapor rises up the column. Fractional distillation column is cooler at the top and hotter at the bottom. The fractions such as fuel oil condenses when the temperature is lower than their boiling point. Since fuel oil has a high boiling point, so it condenses near the bottom. Catalytic cracking at about 650 degrees Celsius converts fuel oil into propane. Name and catalyst used in this process. So aluminum is used in this particular process, which is aluminum oxide. Industrial name of our uh, aluminum oxide is aluminum. We can also see silicon, which is uh, silicon dioxide. One of the compounds in fuel oil has the formula C17H36. Complete the equation for the cracking of one molecule of C17H36 to form two molecules of propane and one molecule of another compound. So the total number of carbons here is 6. So from C17, if we take away 6 carbon, it will be C11. And since it is an alkane, so it is going to be 24. Explain why all the compounds in this cracking reaction are classified as hydrocarbons. These compounds, they all contain carbon and hydrogen atoms only. That's why they are called hydrocarbons. Explain which two compounds in this cracking reaction are described as saturated. The alkenes in this cracking reaction are saturated. So C17 and H36 will be saturated and C11 and H24 will be saturated because they have only single carbon-carbon bonds. Some crude oil contains an impurity known as DMDS. DMDS contains carbon, hydrogen, and sulfur in a ratio of 1 is to 3 is to 1. The relative molecular mass of DMDS is 94. Determine the molecular formula of DMDS. Since the molecule has a ratio of 1 is to 3 is to 1, the empirical formula will be CH3S. Then we will find out the MR of the empirical formula, which is 47. Once we find out the MR of the empirical formula, 47, then we are going to divide to the molecular mass 94 with 47. This gives us 2. So we will find out the molecular formula by multiplying the CH3S with 2 which gives us the molecular formula C2H6S2. Propene reacts with bromine. Which of these is the formula of the product of this reaction? So when propene, propene has a formula of C3H6. When it reacts with bromine, this is the addition reaction. This leads to a product which is C3H6Br2. The conversion of propene into polypropene can be represented by this equation. Draw the displayed formula of propene. So propene contains carbon-carbon double bond with two hydrogens at one end and the other end contains CH3 along with one hydrogen. Draw the repeat unit of the polypropene. To make a polymer from the propene, we will break the middle carbon-carbon double bond and we will extend two hands into side. Then we will draw the remainder of the structure. And since I said repeat unit of this polymer, so we can repeat up until uh, two times or three times. So, you know, we, in this case, we'll repeat up until three times. If the ask is specifically repeat up until two times, then repeat up. Guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching the video. Guys, question paper like this will be uploaded daily. So subscribe the channel and, you know, it's a way of helping us as well. And we wish you all the best for your exam. All right. And the hard work that you're putting on, inshallah, it will pay off. All right, guys, thank you for watching the video and suggest these videos to your friends as well. All right. And, you know, make comments on any mistakes if there is any. All right. Uh, and also, uh, you know, um, comment us to appreciate us on our work so that we can keep on going. You know, whatever you have to comment, it's our appreciation for work. Thank you so much. See you in the next video, guys.